Welcome and welcome back everybody, Tabletop Toki here, and in today's video we'll be doing a solo playthrough of Mind Burners Into the Void from designer Nathan Munir. During the course of the playthrough I'll give a tutorial about how the game is played and be sure you stick around for the end of the video where I share my thoughts about the game in general. Without further ado, let's get started. Here's a game of Mind Burners Into the Void set up and ready to play. In this game you're going to be playing as an experimental clone test subject who has been tasked with dueling in order to win their freedom. In order to do so, you're going to be collecting five equipment cards that will help you along the way. For setup, you're going to shuffle up the deck and draw a starting hand of five cards. During each turn, you will either be taking a card into your tableau or randomly selecting one of the five cards to give to your opponent. The cards have a little bit of information on them, including a suit, which is indicated by the color and shape up in the top left corner, a number of base points, a binary code of zero or one that will be referenced by cards for scoring, symbols which will be referenced by cards for scoring, and then a basic and an install ability. For your cards, all of your basic abilities will score, but you'll only be able to select two install abilities to use. Whereas your opponent, the AI, while they won't be able to choose the order of their cards and will be receiving cards randomly, they will be able to score all of the install abilities on their cards. So for the first round of the game, the AI opponent will get one of these cards randomly. So we're gonna take one of the five and put it into their first slot. We're then gonna go ahead and take a look and see what we have and choose one that we want to keep. And again, at the end, once we have our five cards, we'll be able to put them in an order that best suits us. So we have the highest point card is this five chaos matrix, which looks pretty appealing. And we can get three points with the basic ability. Whereas this card here, the ocular scanner only gets us three points. But if we have this tentacle symbols next to it, we can get two points per each of that symbol. We can also get six points for each red for an install ability, which seems pretty good. The other thing I see here is that we can get three points for each of the skull icons that our opponent has using a chaos matrix, which there are quite a few skulls here. So this would already be nine points if they get this card. So I think we're going to go ahead and take the chaos matrix into our hand. We're then going to randomly give the AI player another card and install it face down. All right, and we want them to get this card so we get as many points as possible. The ocular scanner was a great second pick for us anyway, so we'll go ahead and do that. Then we're going to take five more cards for the second part of the draft. All right, and we get to choose first this time. So we really like that skull install ability. Ooh, this one has two points for skulls on our cards and their cards, which is pretty good as well. We also have brain spike for the positioning we don't have a lot of blue cards for the install ability. This one allows us to score points for batteries. I don't quite remember how many batteries were on their cards, but if we take that, we already have one, two, three, four. So that's eight, five, six. So that's already 12 points, which seems pretty good. And we can definitely put it in the middle because I don't think we have too many things other than ocular scanner, which would score based on adjacency for that. Oh, and actually if we put it next to ocular scanner, that would be even better because it has some of the tentacle icons that we need for that basic ability. All right, and we're going to give one of these randomly to our AI player. We have our final choice. I think at this point we have the install abilities that we want to use. So now we're really looking at the basic abilities. This one is three point. This one is two points for this. So just kind of looking at where we might want some of these cards. I think that mm, this would be three for each, but we're only going to be able to get the one. This would only be two. We have a zero, one, zero in binary. Yes. So I think we're going to go ahead and take this card, which also gives our opponent the skull, which will be points for us. So now what we're going to do is arrange our five card. Like I said, I think having this paired here would get us 12 points with two reds next to it. This would get us a lot of points as well, potentially. Oh, and we want those tentacle next to it. So I think that that's really good. The only thing is if we put this note because this one needs to be here, which means that the only two we can really kind of swap are these two, but this will score us more points with blue. So we'll see which ones we want to push forward. I think we want the three points per skull and the two points per battery. I think that will end up scoring us the most points, even though we would get 12 for this. Let's go ahead and see how our opponent did. So that brings us to scoring. We're gonna go ahead and start by scoring our 
AI opponent's basic abilities. We have 3, 2, which is 5, plus 4 is 9, plus 10 is 19 points. Then they have 0 for this card. They have 4 here, another 4 here, so that's 8. We don't have three zeros in a row, nor do we have this, so that's 8 points there. And then we're looking at all of the install abilities for their cards. So we have 0011, again, that's not in the binary. They have three yellows, which is going to be 12 points. We'll just change this to 20. They can use batteries as skulls and oh, jeez. They are going to score two points for skulls in theirs and their opponents. This one is nothing. So by using that, they're going to be able to take, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 times two which is going to be a whopping 38 points. So I believe that brings us to 77 points for our AI player. We're going to score our cards now on the other hand. So we have a base score of 532, which is 10, 18. Then we're going to go ahead and look at our basic abilities. This one has three points. This one has two points for tentacle, which we have four of them. So that brings us to 11 plus five plus five, 21. And we have our 010 binary right here in the middle. So that's going to be 24 points. Now we can only score our two install abilities, which doesn't look great. I think we want to start with this one. Three points for every skull that our opponent has. We have one, two, three, four, five. So that's 15 points. And then two points for batteries on both sides. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's 18 points. And that as a total brings us to 75 points, just shy of beating our opponent in this duel. So there you have it. That is a solo playthrough of Mindburners Into the Void. Although this game consists of only drafting five freaking cards, it is so engaging. I absolutely love the fact that there are so many things that you have to keep track of. The base points for the card, the suit of the card, the binary seat, the different icons listed for scoring your ability and also your install ability. So six different things per card that you have to keep track of, not to mention thinking about how you're going to arrange it into your line of five cards at the end of the game for scoring is just what a way to pack so many fun decisions into such a quick and snappy game. This game plays great at two, but I particularly love the solo mode because you're getting to see exactly kind of which cards the solo opponent is taking. And the fact that they're going to score all of their basic abilities makes for some really challenging and interesting decisions. It very much encapsulates the feel of multiplayer drafting, knowing that you don't want them to be able to score skulls if they have a lot of skulls already but maybe that card doesn't work well with the synergies that you're creating with your items. It's a lot of fun packed into a very small package. And again, the versatility of being able to play it solo and on the go versus playing it two player. I think they both work equally as well. And not to mention Nathan Munir consistently hitting it out of the park with the theme and presentation. I'm not a huge theme person. I'm not even a huge sci-fi fan, but you can tell that there is a passion there for the genre and for creative storytelling that really comes through in the game and in the very evocative art that Nathan has created for their games. It is very affordable as it is just an 18 card game. And because you only use 10 cards in each playthrough, there are going to be eight cards that you don't even see on a first playthrough. So there's a lot of variability going back and seeing how the different cards can combo together. Overall, if you like the aesthetic, if you like the theme, if you like drafting and are looking for a quick game that you can play on the go anytime, anywhere, be sure to check out Mind Brewers Into the Void from Nathan Munir. And that's all the time we have for today. If you enjoyed the video, as always, it super helps out the channel if you subscribe down below. And you can also click the bell for notifications to make sure you're updated anytime I release a new solo party video. Thank you as always for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye! I'm absolutely pulling up a calculator right now because I can't do math.